Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I present the new and improved Orion 3 space plane. I decided to test it during a live stream with its carrier plane and so that's what this video is about. I haven't made the wings yet, uh, still working on that and again uh, in comparison to the one in 2001 A Space Odyssey, there are differences. For instance, I'm using Prometheus vacuum engines. So those are real engines, methane and oxygen engines. And we've got the vertical stabilizers and I've also put, uh, put uh, heat shielding on the bottom. This is the carrier plane next to a 747. So as you can see, somewhat comparable, though the 747 has more bulk to it. And so the carrier plane dry mass is a little bit lighter. Uh, after all, the 747 also has the whole cabin and seating thing where there's just a small cockpit with a huge fuel tank. So I'm fixing up the wings, trying to figure out what wings will be good on this. And we ultimately put on nine Raptor engines, but I cut down to seven briefly during testing. But we will have nine at the end. So Raptor sea level engines those are. And here I go testing it empty on the runway, but that didn't work out. I put six jet engines. They're actually the SR-71 pseudo ramjet engines, uh, but it sort of flipped like that. That wasn't very good. So I had to take it out to the runway on launch clamps. So here we are on launch clamps. So six of the SR-71's engines at the back in order to test its flight capabilities empty. There's no methane oxygen in here for the Raptor engine. So this is a, a methane oxygen system right now. We should test it with hydrogen oxygen to see how that works out. And, you know, advanced engines like nuclear engines with a reactor and all that business. After all, this is from a sci-fi movie, 2001 A Space Odyssey. So we would like it to have advanced features potentially. Anyway, flight-wise, this was looking good empty, which is how it would have to land ultimately, right? This carrier plane sends off the space plane and then lands empty all on its own. So this is looking good so far. I did impose certain limitations on it. I wanted the wing to look basically like the wing of the space plane. And the only images I have of the combined system, the carrier plane just basically looks like a larger version of the... Space plane, except it doesn't have the unique tail of the space plane. Now, we had trouble stopping because right now we're empty and I sort of configured the wing to be a little bit bigger for having, you know, potentially taking off with fuel. So I went around, but still it wasn't very good. So I decided I would need air brakes and a drag chute. So this is not going to work very well. We still got the launch clamps on the runway there. But you can see how fast we're coming in just simply because I couldn't slow down. I tried to make S turns and whatever, but I didn't want to waste too much time on this because I got the information I needed that it could take off and potentially land. So that's good enough for me for the moment. The other question after this meets its demise here, and incidentally, the body does not look like it's one of those very resilient bodies here. As we can see, it hits the quote-unquote land and goes poof it just disappears but yeah given that I decide to put the drogue chutes put the air brakes and hopefully that will help us stop properly and they will help us stop properly I subsequently tested that and then I tried to take off with it fueled could we take off from a runway with the space plane with this. Well, that seems unlikely. It's a very, very heavy thing. You can see at the bottom there, we are past 1,000 tons. So even with the six SR-71 engines, this is how it accelerates. And let's not talk about its stall speed. That's just way, way beyond what we can get on a runway. So I tried to light the Raptor engine, just one to see if we can boost ourselves up but that did not work out I lit more close to the end of runway but we're already going pretty fast the limitation is actually what kind of tires do you think you can make right I mean can you make tires that are capable of going 300 miles an hour mm, that's a tough one so but even at uh, past 300 miles an hour or 
150 meters per second. I'm pulling up as hard as I can and this isn't going up. So it looks like we're going to have to launch this vertically. And I think that that's how they would have, they intended to launch it in 2001 A Space Odyssey. I don't think it was a runway takeoff. I think it was launched vertically. So here we are. Uh, the Orion 3 space plane on its carrier plane launching vertically. In order to get it off the runway at a lower speed, of course, we need a bigger wing, but that doesn't seem to have been a thing in the design. So, we're going vertically, and it might not have gone inverted. That's to reduce stress on the aero surfaces. Maybe it'd be necessary, maybe it wouldn't be. You'll note that the carrier plane has a high mounted wing and the space plane has a low mounted wing. Uh, ideally, that would reduce drag or weird aerodynamic effects and you'd want them probably closer than they are right now even. So we are taking off from Brownsville and my goal was to land the carrier plane at Cape Canaveral because I've got a permanent runway at Cape Canaveral thanks to Kerbal Constructs and Katniss Cape Canaveral and it looks good and everything. So this is the only location to launch out of that we could potentially land the carrier plane at Cape Canaveral at that permanent runway. But we eventually go sort of out of control, the balance isn't quite right when the carrier plane has completely run out of fuel or close to run out of fuel. I have to save a little bit of fuel in it for running the RCS so that it could orient itself in space prior to returning into the atmosphere. The space plane is not in a good situation and it doesn't have enough delta V to get to orbit anyway. So we have to put more delta V in the carrier plane, which is why we ultimately go back to having nine Raptor engines instead of seven. But here, yeah, this isn't working out for us. So I went to the carrier plane and we are going to try and recover it. And we do manage to orient it properly eventually. And the because it's a suborbital trajectory, a pretty serious one, it does the bounce off thing. And that's, pr uh, that's a pretty high G maneuver. You can see it's getting about 9 G's here. So maybe make this automated instead of having pilots in? Maybe. That would be a good idea. But yeah, it's sort of skip gliding somewhat. Not a real skip glide. And ultimately I need to turn on the jet engines. I, we've reduced it to two because it's not taking off from a runway. And two will be more than enough to land with. It is not enough to keep us above Mach 1 though, and this lapses into sort of an airliner situation, uh, Mach 0.87, around 30,000 feet. And I packed basically just enough kerosene to get back, but I thought it prudent to burn off the remainder of our methane and oxygen just to make sure we get back. It was looking okay, but a little bit tight, so here I am using one of the Raptor engines to drain the methane and oxygen, get us some more speed, and we are on our way back down. You can see me using the air brakes a bit, and preparing for landing. So this is lined up. I don't line up particularly precisely. It's a little bit hard to do it from the exterior view. I did put a Mark III cockpit in the carrier plane, but we don't have any kerbals in, so I can't look through the cockpit. And even so, looking through the cockpit is bad because the Mark III cockpit that I put in there doesn't line up with the windows in front very well right now. I also need to turn off gimbling on the engines when they're not being used. That'll be action grouped later on. Okay, so here's the landing. And touchdown. So that part is okay. Now, on if we put more fuel in and boost the space plane to a faster velocity, we are going to be coming down much faster, and that might change things. So that's something else we have to test. I did test during the live stream, though that won't be in this video. I'll do take care of re-entry in a separate video. So here we are fixing things. I decided that the separation motors could be a little bit stronger. I am using little uh, retro rockets, SRBs, in order to separate the carrier from the space plane. And we have increased the field to get about 600 meters per second, more delta V at least. 
and therefore we needed two more raptor engines. Note that I'm using the basic raptor stats that were tested at the moment and not the more advanced raptor stats that SpaceX said that it would be capable of after further testing. So, with that, we are launching with nine Raptor engines, so this is basically a Unix rocket. I've made a nine Raptor booster before, but of course it has wings, so it's better. Note that still the combined mass of this is less than of a Falcon Heavy, so there are benefits to this, especially since it can carry 24 passengers in the space plane, with the food, water, and oxygen and all that business. And the space plane is not uh, too far off, it's about the mass of a 737 dry. So, considering it's only carrying 24 passengers, it seems reasonable. And if you put it up against a space shuttle, it would look to be about the right mass. So here we are, rolling around. Again, launching out of Brownsville. As you might expect, getting the re-entry with the space plane right is going to require a lot of center of mass, center of lift tweaking. They have to be in fairly close to the right position, you know, that's a fudge factor of like a meter to get that right. So, here I'm shutting off the four lower engines on the carrier plane. Ultimately, I action group that, but there I do it manually, and we are reserving some fuel for the carrier plane to use its RCS for orientation but letting go of the space plane and the space plane uses its Prometheus vacuum engines so I mean this is all possible right now in theory um, these are not advanced engines these are just the engines people are developing right now so there is that now eventually I do want to test it with Hydrolox and the nuclear engines and advanced stuff but this is just demonstrating the general viability here it looks like the prometheus engines because of the way that they're tilted and on the top of the body aren't quite aligned right with the center of mass so it's wiggling and that was a little bit tough and we also our rcs was misconfigured so i wasn't able to relight at apoapsis in order to circularize so i fixed that that was uh issue that required a restart and I also fixed the alignment of the Prometheus engines and we were off again. So this time for keeps we want the space plane in orbit and we are launching. It is a fairly gentle launch and all the engines involved I think are throttle. I think the Prometheus engines can throttle. The Raptor engines certainly can. So we can keep the thrust weight ratio to reasonable levels for our passengers, if by reasonable we mean, you know, two to three Gs. All right, here we turn off the bottom four engines and getting ready for separation. Unfortunately, I actually deplete all of the carrier planes propellant this time. So we'll have to take that into consideration when looking at how much delta V the space plane ends up with in orbit. And that's an issue, right? The space station that the Orion 3 space plane rendezvous with is actually in a fairly high orbit. It's like 1,300 kilometers. So this has to get up there. And taking a look, we end up with, oh, about 700-ish meters per second. So. The carrier plane saving some fuel is not going to prevent this from getting to orbit, but it, it the margins might be too tight to get to the space station that we're supposed to. So I'm using my little pass-through system so the Kerbals can flow through. There's Val taking a quick tour of the cabin, taking a look at the windows and such, and ultimately bumping into things, making sure that our colliders work so that Kerbals do not accidentally clip through things that they shouldn't. Hint, hint. Uh, game developers take note. It's not that hard to do colliders. <laughs> um, we actually had one missing collider in the back, actually. Um, the, on the hatch in the back of the cabin that I'll have to add later. But, yep, we just float right through, and here we are in space. 
Now, uh, for the passengers, that might not be the best thing. That we have a depressurized cabin right now, but it's alright, the Kerbals are all suited. Anyway, with this dramatic music and this dramatic view, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.